And Scott, let's talk about this Merck pill, what it means, and some of the after effects. Was looking at it this morning, and both Novavax and Moderna shares were down once again after being down double digit percentages on Friday. People are thinking, okay, the pill is going to be the way. Maybe that replaces uh, some of the vaccines. What do you think? Hey, look, I don't think the pill is going to be a replacement for the vaccine. People still need to get vaccinated. The pill is going to be very effective at helping treat people who have breakthrough infections, assuming it's authorized for that indication. And I think it should be, as well as people who don't get vaccinated, choose not to get vaccinated or can't get vaccinated. You know, and in the future, as we think about pandemic preparedness, our first line of defense may well be therapeutics rather than vaccines. The therapeutics could potentially be easier to come up with. And this pill in particular looks like it could be a pan-coronavirus um, therapeutic. And it also looks like it could work against any um, respiratory pathogen that replicates through RNA. So that's hmm. a very broad universe. This does look like a very interesting compound. And I think uh, these are the kinds of drugs that we need to be investing in. And you know, just finally, final point on this, it's a very profound treatment effect. I think that's why people are very optimistic, because you saw a profound treatment effect in a population of patients who are at risk from COVID. So this was a population of patients with risk factors who were well into their, um, the course of their disease. They were already symptomatic. They had at least five days or up to five days of symptoms before they got treated. And you still saw a very big treatment effect in terms of reduction in hospitalization and death. So the presumption is that if you can move this antiviral earlier in, in the treatment of patients and maybe even also use it in milder patients, patients not at the same significant risk as the ones included in this clinical trial, you'll see even a more profound treatment effect. Scott, how long before this pill potentially gets a clearance from the FDA? And, and who do you think the most likely people are to be cleared for it? I mean, those are big questions that are kind of out there. Also, are there people who shouldn't take the pill? Yeah, it's, it's going to certainly, the presumption is it's going to be indicated for the population that was studied. So these were people with more than one or more risk factors for COVID who were within five days of diagnosis um, the question is, would FDA extrapolate to people who are vaccinated and have breakthrough infections? I don't see any reason why they wouldn't. People who are, ha are at risk but have a breakthrough infection after vaccination, there's no reason to think that this wouldn't work um, in that setting. Merck is going to start filing the data as of this week on sort of a rolling submission. I think they could be ready to request an emergency use authorization as early as this week. And it is just a question of how long the FDA's drug review division takes to review this. I suspect they won't be as fast as the vaccine division has been in terms of how they've granted these supplemental indications. But remember, the FDA has been looking at this data for a very long time. They, they presumably have the whole preclinical tox package. So this isn't new data to them. So this could be a one to two month review. You could see an emergency use, auth use authorization within one to two months hmm. um, of the submission this week. The problem is we only have 1.7 million doses. Merck's okay. committed to make 10 million doses before the end of the year. But a lot of those doses are probably committed overseas. Um, I, I assume there's more than the 1.7 million that we have an option on, but probably not a lot more. And to give you a basis for comparison, 1.7 million doses for the uh, indicated population would have been enough to cover about a month of the Delta wave. And to give you another basis of comparison, we've stockpiled between 50 and 80 million doses of flu medication in the strategic national stockpile. And we contracted for 1.7 million doses of this drug. So hmm. it's not a lot. It's, it's you know, it's something, it's but some it's time. not a lot. Yeah, it's going to take some time before they can ramp it up. Uh, Joe brought up Anthony Fauci's comments over the weekend about how we're still going to have to see, wait and see if we can get together at Christmas. That caught me off guard because I figure if, if kids can get under age uh, 12 can get vaccinated by the time Halloween's here, man, that makes me think, OK, Thanksgiving's on, too. Uh, like, what's going to stop us from getting together after that point? Well, nothing's going to stop us from getting together, and we're going to be getting together for Thanksgiving, and we're going to be getting together for Christmas. I think that what people need to do is judge what the prevalence is in their local community and, and what the risk is within their family setting. Uh, if you have older individuals, young kids who aren't vaccinated, who can introduce infection into that setting, people should just be prudent, you know, use testing as a way to, to secure that kind of encounter. But there's nothing that's going to prevent us from being able to gather around the holidays this year. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.